Assalamu alaikum. So this is where we stopped in part one, which was the NMOS uh, small signal equivalent circuit. You were introduced to the um, uh, drawing the AC equivalent circuit for uh, NMOS, and then we had a look at uh, how to get the values of the transconductance parameter GM and R out. Uh, and then uh, we did an example uh, of a small signal uh, equivalent circuit to find a gain of um, of a basic common source circuit. Okay. All right, now let's carry on with PMOS. We've done NMOS before we just uh, wrap up this subsection. Okay, so a PMOS common source circuit consists, of course, of a PMOS. But here, um, as we know, the when it's a PMOS, we connect the source at a higher potential than the drain. Okay, so in this case, if we were to follow the uh, same approach, the same topology of the NMOS circuit, the source would be connected directly to the drain uh, to, sorry uh, to VDD and the drain will be connected to ground uh, uh, with RD in between okay so in this in this circuit here we've done this in um, DC analysis as well but in this circuit here just as in uh, NMOS we have um, DC source okay and um, uh, AC uh, input signal okay so so I was, this is just saying what I said just now, uh, power supply voltage VDD is connected to source. And just pay attention on the current directions and voltage polarities. This was covered with the MOSFET device in the MOSFET DC analysis. So we, instead of VGS, we have VSG. And instead of VDS, we have, we have VSD because S source is higher. Okay, this is the AC equivalent circuit. So in the AC equivalent circuit, VDD becomes uh, ground. It becomes grounded, and so is VDG. Okay, so this is why uh, it's still called a common source circuit because, uh, by right, if you look at the um, DC circuit, it's the drain that is connected to um, the ground. But because this is still the topology, where if you drew, if you do the AC equivalent circuit, the source is still connected to ground. So AC equivalent circuit of the PMOS itself, because this AC equivalent circuit still has. PMOS in the form of PMOS. So if we were to um, convert it with a low frequency model, then um, the PMOS becomes just as in the NMOS, but uh, the polarity changes from VGS to VSG. And the arrow of the dependent current source here, take note that it goes up and R out is still R out. And this, the, this top here is just for the transistor. The bottom one here is uh, for PMOS uh, in the common source circuit. So uh, this bottom uh, um, equivalent circuit here has RD which is the drain resistance this one and um, it includes V in which is the AC input signal uh, shown in phaser form uh, in this uh, circuit so it's the same thing just as in NMOS uh, we need to get the voltage uh, gain and in order to do that we want V out over V in and in order to do that we find V out through the Ohm's law across RD, or you can say KVL, it's the same thing. So the current that goes through here is GM vs G. It goes through the parallel combination of R out and RD. So this is what happens. The current will flow from here to the combination of the uh, equivalent resistance of uh, parallel R out and RD. Okay, but this is V out. What we want is V in as well, because so that we can write down V out over V in, because what we want is the voltage gain. So uh, from the input loop, uh, we find an expression for VSG to replace this term VSG in the V out here. So in the, from the input loop, you get VSG to be um, equals to negative V in. Okay. Because, you know, when we draw the uh, equivalent model, it's still gate and drain at the top. So source is at the bottom. So when we say VSG, the positive terminal is at the bottom here. Okay. So when we do KVL around here, you get uh, VSG equals to negative VN. So replacing VSG's expression here, okay, uh, we get an expression of AV, which is V out over VN. Okay. Uh, so even though when we did V out, uh, the expression for V out, there was no negative sign here, but because when we found the expression for VSG, uh, it was equated to negative VN. So when we replace it in here, our gain AV, which is V out over VN, is still a negative expression of GM. Uh, VSG gets uh, uh, replaced with VN. VN has been taken down to the other side of the equation. So it's negative GM times the parallel combination of R out and RD. It's negative meaning V out is 180 degrees out of phase with VN. Which means when V out, when VN is increasing, 
uh, V out is decreasing and when V in is decreasing for in this if it's a sinusoidal uh, uh, form then V out is increasing okay so now let's have a look at the common source amplifier um, let's just have a look in general basic transistor configurations there are three basic single transistor amplifier configurations that can be formed depending on which of the three transistor terminals is used as signal ground if it's common source common drain or also known as source for lower and common gate so in in ELE424, we will only focus on common source amplifiers. The rest of the uh, circuits will be covered in later chapters, such as ELE426. The input and output resistance characteristics of amplifiers are important in determining loading effects. The whole purpose of amplifiers is to take an in input signal and to produce an output signal. So there'll be an input circuit and the be an uh, output circuit that you will be communicating with so this loading effects is important which is why the amplifier needs to be um, uh, specified in terms of input and output resistance so these parameters as well as voltage gain have their uses under different conditions uh, because sometimes you have a low um, input resistance high output resistance or sometimes you have high input resistance low output resistance because that's there's a purpose for the purpose and uh, time for all this uh, application so um, so they, it has its uses under different conditions where each amplifier is most useful right so we thought we've introduced a common source amplifier but we're introducing the common source amplifier again but this time looking at the really the amplifying um, function this particular circuit shows a basic common source circuit with voltage divider biasing Okay, just like BJT, you have here a voltage divider biasing, R1 and R2. That fixes VGS. Okay, so source is at ground potential, hence the name common source. The DC transistor biasing is established by R1 and R2 because it, it fixes VGS and VGS fixes ID. RD and VDD determines the load line, hence the possible Q points um, that this biasing can produce for the circuit. So VN is the AC signal source. This is VN and RS input. Okay, uh, for the uh, signal source uh, input circuit. Okay, is the signal source resistance. This is the signal source resistance. Now, wh when the word source that we use here refers to the source circuit, meaning the input circuit that goes into the amplifier, not the source terminal. So this one here, this V in AC input signal and this uh, signal source resistance, in an, in actual, it doesn't look like this. Okay, it would come from, it could be a say say for example, it could be a microphone circuit. Okay, so it's drawn this way because um, it, this is a simple representation, and um, we can say that it's like the seven in equivalent circuit of the source circuit um, that the amplifier just needs to know about. So the, there is a coupling capacitor here, CC1. Okay. CC provides, uh, coupling capacitor provides DC isolation between the amplifier, this is the amplifier, and the signal source, which is this one. The transistor biasing, therefore, you know, the, the, the one that we mentioned about R1 and R2, this transistor biasing is not disturbed by the DC levels from the source circuit. So whatever DC levels from the source circuit is for the source circuit. And then because of this coupling capacitor, it is isolated from this amplifier. This amplifier gets its Q point from its um, biasing circuit, not from the source circuit. So uh, this is uh, what it means when we say the signal source is capacitively coupled to the amplifier. The AC uh, signal can go through, but not the DC level from the source circuit. Now let's look at the common source amplifier and the load line we covered earlier in part one about the load line. Okay, just relating it back. So this graph shows that the DC load line, okay, this is the DC load line with the transition point here. This is the transition point that separates the saturation bias region here and the non saturation bias region. Okay, it also shows the Q point which is uh, in the saturation or which should be in the saturation saturation region if you're talking about linear amplifier. Okay. So what's going to happen is that this Q point is going to be along this load line 
based on the value of VGS uh, in the output characteristics of ID versus VDS, you're going to have a family of curves. So you choose which VGS it is, but as it rises, it's not going to rise vertically, it will rise along this load line. So why are we putting this back again in the common source amplifier? Okay, just, just putting it back here because in order to provide the maximum symmetrical output voltage swing because what's going to happen is that you're going to be fed with a small input signal and then you're going to have an a, a larger output signal right okay uh, to provide a maximum symmetrical output voltage swing without distortion we need to keep the transistor biased in the saturation region because when you um, uh, vary VGSQ uh, from the input voltage okay it will um, uh, vary along this line here like this but if if the value of um, VGS will cause ID and VDS Q point to pass uh, over the uh, beyond the transition point into the non saturation region then um, uh, the amplifier will not be linear anymore and you can expect distortion to happen Okay, so uh, for maximum symmetrical, symmetrical means no distortion. Yeah, it's just the same uh, because if you're, you're talking about an AC input signal, a uh, sinusoidal. Uh, so if you want to keep it symmetrical, then you have to keep it uh, biased in the saturation region, not going into the non-saturation region. So th for that reason, uh, we want to keep the Q point uh, in the middle of the saturation region. So let's say if this is too let's say VDS here is 2, 2 volts and let's say VDD here is uh, 10 volts <coughs> so 10 minus 2 is going to be 8 so 8, uh, you divide it by 2 be 4 so if, if I choose a 4 volts um, from the transition point so it will be 6 volts in the middle okay. so if it's in the middle you can have uh, uh, equal uh, up and down without um, clipping uh, in an unbalanced way so at the same time the input signal okay other than putting Q point uh, in the middle of the saturation region at the same time the input signal that you feed the amplifier must be small enough for the amplifier to remain linear so I, the, in the previous part one video we mentioned about this um, what it means for the um, uh, signal to be a small signal okay small signals um, need linear amplifiers okay so if you're talking about uh, signal to give um, uh, beyond that uh, then you need to consider power amplifiers so that would be large signal all right still here now let's look at the um, small signal equivalent circuit of the common source amplifier but this time we have this input source uh, V in and the source signal resistance RSI here is it is shown in the circuit because before this when we drew the common source amplifier we ignored this part what happens if there is this section okay if there is this section there's nothing um, new okay there's just no point in memorizing and memorizing the formulas the expressions okay it's always good to look at the circuit and then um, uh, draw the small signal equivalent circuit for example you may have an additional resistor here okay or you may have an additional resistor elsewhere so whatever it is just stick to make sure to making sure that the notes tally uh, and you're still doing things like Ohm's law Kirchhoff voltage law do it correctly you won't go wrong okay so anyway so this is a small signal equivalent circuit I have here the usual small signal equivalent circuit that we covered before this but now we have V in and RSI and here okay it's going to be v in is going to look at uh, rsi to be in series with input resistance which is the resistance that you will see when it is uh, um, between this uh, input terminals so r in okay when it sees this whole circuit here because this is like an open circuit because this is a low frequency model okay what it's going to see is just r1 parallel with r2 Okay, because R1 is connected to VDD, VDD becomes ground, so R1 is effectively parallel with R2 in the AC analysis. So R in will see R1 parallel with R2. Okay, right here. And R out is the output resistance when it is seen from the output terminal. And when we see uh, uh, from the output terminal, when we want to find the output uh, resistance, we set 
um, Vn equals to 0 because that's that's the way of the two-part model. So if Vn is equals to 0, then Vgs is going to be 0. If Vgs is going to be 0, when you see R out from the output terminal, okay, you will only see R out parallel, uh, the uh, um, output resistance of the transistor to be in parallel with the drain resistance. Okay. Now, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you should go back to two-port network when we covered uh, BJT earlier. It applies, two-port networks applies to anything. Okay, whether it is a uh, BJT or uh, MOSFET. Right, so now what about the voltage gain? Now that we have V in and RSI, RSI here, how do we find the expression for the voltage gain? The expression, the approach to find it is still the same and it's not difficult. It's doing Ohm's law at the output loop and then Ohm's law at the input loop and then get V out and V in to be the same equation so that you can write the expression V out over V in. So V out, when we see, uh, when we do a uh, Kutcher voltage law in this loop, or you can also think about doing Ohm's law across uh, our uh, output resistance parallel with drain resistance, it's going to be V out equals to negative GM VGS because it's the current. This is actually V equals to IR. So negative GM VGS times resistance, which is R out parallel with RD. Why is it negative? Because it's current entering the voltage terminal through the uh, negative terminal. Uh, entering the uh, voltage expression through the negative terminal. And then once I have this expression, I cannot yet write V out over V in because I don't have V in. But I know a way of finding VGS in terms of V in which is going to be VGS um, from V in through the voltage divider rule. So just now we said uh, the input voltage will see RSI to be in series with RI. Okay, that's all that it's going to see. So you can, if you want to find VGS, which is the voltage drop across uh, parallel equivalent resistance of R1 and R2, so I can just do um, VGS is equals to RI Okay, R input divided by R input plus R uh, source uh, resistance, input source resistance times uh, input voltage VI. So I can now replace this VGS, okay, this expression of VGS in V out with this expression of VGS that we found from this voltage divider rule. And once we have the same in the same equation V out and V in, we can rearrange, we can rewrite V out over V in, therefore we can find the voltage gain to be um, negative GM times R out parallel with RD times okay R in this R in divided by R in plus RSI okay so what does it, what is this saying actually what it's saying is actually if the input has a source resistance okay it's going to take some of the voltage uh, away from the amplifier okay so I uh, will have a look at this um, example so now we're going to have an example the same common source amplifier but this one this one with the source signal circuit included so let's determine the small signal voltage gain and input and output resistance of a common source amplifier we have a common source amplifier it's nmos in this case and here we have an input uh, voltage with rsi the given parameters is vdd equals to 3.3 volts this one RD is 10 kilo ohms, R1 is 140 kilo ohms, R2 is 60 kilo ohms, and RSI is 4 kilo ohms. So this, these are values, these, are, these relative values are quite realistic. Okay. So what you're going to see is that uh, the input um, signal source resistance uh, is actually quite, uh, smaller uh, compared to R1 and R2. Now the transistor parameters, here we have VTN equals to 0 0.4 volts, KN is 0 0.5 milliampere v, v squared and the channel length modulation parameter is 0 0.02 per volts. So this is the working, this is the uh, what's it, what's involved. As usual, I'll just put it so that you can see what's involved. These are all handwritten. Okay, later on, we'll just I'm just going to take the book and just going to paste it so that you just see. But um, sometimes when I have the time, I'll, I will write this down uh, in a, a pen and pa paper approach. And sometimes, you know, when the, the, the thing about practicing the pen and paper approach is that later on, you, you have this uh, hopefully embedded in your mind. So you, it may not be this exact kind of way, but you know that, it's, for example, you know you do the DC first, get the bicing sorted before you get into AC. Okay, for the analysis right so now this is the DC equivalent circuit okay we redraw the DC equivalent circuit I have still have the 140k 60k and 10k I know that uh, the gate um, terminal does not take in any current so R1 is parallel with R2 and therefore I can do voltage divider rule to find VG 
Okay, VG, which is the voltage drop between the gate terminal and ground, uh, that it will take from uh, VDD 3.3 volts. So it's 60K, between 60K and 140K, I get VG equals to 0 0.99 volts. Now, once I have that, okay, I can find uh, IDQ if I assume saturation. Okay, this is the approach that we did from the last, sorry, uh, we did from the last lecture. We assume saturation um, first and then we'll check later. Assuming saturation, I get ID is equals to uh, KN VGS minus VTN squared. Okay, this is perhaps in MOSFET, this is um, uh, among the few equations that you have to um, memorize. So, uh, or have in hand just for, you know, just to estimate ballpark figure. So you have a quite quiescent point ID uh, of uh, KN 0 0.5 minus uh, VGS is 0 0.99 minus 0 because VS is 0 minus 0 0.4 and square it up. So I get IDQ equals to 0 0.174 milliamp. Now, knowing this, I'm going to check. I would like to check because if I say IDQ, for me to check whether it is correct, Lee assume that it is in saturation, I need to find VDS. And for me to find VDS, I need to find VD. Now, I can find VD if I already know ID. And since I know RD, which is 10 kilo ohms, and I know VDD, I can do the voltage drop across the um, resistor RD equals to ohm's law ID RD. So VDD minus VD is equals to ID RD. And I get this value for VD, which is which says that this terminal here is 1.56 volts. And because VS here is ground, so it's 1.56 minus 0, which is equals to 1.56 volts to be the Q point for VDS. Why am I finding this? Because I want to check whether the assumption that it is in saturation is correct or not. And I can compare the value for VDS set, or, or some of the books would call it overdrive voltage, okay, is equals to 0 0.99 VGS minus VTN. 0 0.99 minus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.59 volts. So 1.56 volts is greater than 0 0.59 volts, or VDSQ is greater than VDS set. Therefore, uh, the assumption that it is in saturation is verified. Next, I find the transconductance parameter, which is uh, GM equals to 2 square root KNID. Okay, 2 square root 0 0.5 milliamp uh, amp per uh, volt squ uh, square times 0 0.174 milliamp. So, and square root, the product of that, I get 0 0.59 milliamp per volt. And because um, the value of the channel length modulation parameter is given, which means that I'm I, I'm, I am not assuming that uh, output resistance is infinite. I am taking into consideration that there is an R out, so of the output resistance, uh, finite output resistance for the transistor. So 1 over lambda IDQ gives me 287 kilo ohm. So if I draw the AC equivalent circuit, this values GM and R out will be the values that we'll put in here. And this values GM and R out are the values that needed the DC analysis values of IDQ uh, to find the value of them. Okay, so this was the uh, equation, uh, the uh, common source circuit. So doing the AC equivalent circuit here gives you VDD will be grounded, so which means R1 and R2 is in parallel. Okay, and the rest, um, GM, VGS, and R out is part of the uh, low frequency model of uh, MOSFET. And then we have RD, which is connected from the uh, drain terminal to ground, okay, in to signal ground. Okay. And now we have V in and RSI, just just like just uh, when we j mentioned just now. But if we're doing this uh, in a problem, we'll have to redraw it. So the input resistance gives me 140k and 60k to be equals to 42 kilo ohm, and the output resistance is going to be between 287 kilo ohm, which is output resistance of um, uh, drain re output drain resistance, and then uh, RD is the drain resistance that is externally connected, which is 10 kilo ohm. So I get R out to be 9.66. The s output of the amplifier resistance to be 9.66 kilo ohms. And why am I doing this? Because I want to find voltage gain. To find voltage gain, I need to find V out over V in. To find V out over V in, I need to find an expression for V out. Okay. So in my mind, as I'm doing this uh, solution, to find V out, I know that I have to consider Ohm's law across the parallel resistance of R out and RD. So output loop, Ohm's law, V equals to IR, V is V out, I is GMVGS, and it's negative because it's entering 
um, the voltage expression through the negative terminal and the resistance is output resistance, uh, drain output resistance of the transistor and um, the small signal parameter per resistance times Rd. And the input loop is the voltage divider rule. I'm just going to turn back. So the input loop is the voltage divider rule between RSI and R in of V in. So this is going to be VGS equals to R in over R in plus RSI times V in. And replacing VGS in the expression for V out okay, gives me this. So that when I have an equation that has V out and V in in the same uh, equation left and right, I can rearrange, take V in here. I, can, I would therefore have this expression of V out over V in, which is equal to this value. Just as we explained just now, but here it's handwritten so that I can do uh, this... Uh, um, on pen and paper and then I get this value of negative 5.21 so why are we doing this example is the same it's the same example just as the previous example except that in this question in this example there is RSI and since there is RSI which means uh, there is a, a voltage divider rule for uh, VGS okay VGS does not get all of V in Okay. VGS gets only a portion of V in, which is 0 0.913. So it's about 91% of V in. The rest of it goes to RSI because there is a value for RSI. Alright, now let's do a design example. Okay, This design example is just to strengthen your understanding or give you the mindset of um, how to approach a design example when things are not all spelled out. Okay, Now let's design a bias of a MOSFET circuit such as the Q point of this circuit in the middle of the saturation region and we want to determine the resulting small signal voltage gain if we design the Q point in the middle of the in the middle of the saturation region okay the specification is that the circuit to be designed has this configuration okay we don't know what R1 and R2 is but the uh, equivalent uh, resistance between R1 and 2 these two parallel resistance in the AC equivalent circuit is 100 kilo ohm. Now we want to design this circuit such that Q point IDQ is 2 milliamp and the Q point is in the middle of the saturation region. Okay, which means it does not say what VDS is. And we do not we we know that R1 and R2 has to be 100 kilo ohm but we do not know yet what VGS is. Okay, mind you this is just a design example. Okay? This is not a calculation example. This is a design example which requires you to think and to assume or to make guesses somewhere that um, that have um, reasons uh, that support your um, uh, assumptions or your starting point. Okay, choices. A transistor is given. Okay, you have one an, an, a transistor with nominal parameters VTN equals to one volt KN prime, which is the process. Uh, parameter which is 80 microamp per volt squared W over L is 25 and the channel length modulation parameter is 0 0.015 per volts okay why is it saying that it's a choice because in an actual design example you can actually choose the transistor that you use okay either you buy the transistor uh, an individually packaged transistor or you are in a teamwork doing an IC design and you have been given the transistor nom um, um, model parameters so that you can work on your uh, module design so this is also given okay the output characteristics and if we do a load line okay how do we know that how, how can we draw the load line we can do a kvl at the output loop so you're going to get um, an expression that relates um, vds okay to id okay, y versus x axis uh, when you do kvl so you can write it out and do uh, y equals to mx plus c we've done that many times before uh, in this uh, in the videos before this okay and then um this is 12 volts um uh this is uh, four milliamps okay the transition point okay this is given so we'll need to decide uh, what should be where the q point should be Okay, so first of all, the conductive parameter is Kn equals to Kn prime W over 2L. So we, based on the value that it has been given to us, Kn is 1 milliamp of volt squared. Now we cannot calculate VDS set at the transition point. Okay. VDS set at the transition point here. Okay, I know it's 4 milliamp, but I don't know what VDS set is. So since I know what... Uh, 
uh, the, the value for uh, current drain current at the transition point, I can find VGS at the transition point. Gate source voltage at the transition point from the saturation current equation. Okay, so because um, Okay, because we're talking about biasing in the saturation region, right? So it's just sensible to assume that it is in saturation. So ID, IDT, okay, will give you a value of gate source uh, voltage is equal to 3 volts. And if I know VGS at the transition point is 3 volts, then I know that the VDS at the transition point is 2 volts. Okay? If the VDS at the transition point is 2 volts, then I can estimate where middle of the saturation region is. I'm going to go back. Okay, so based on a calculation of IDS, I'm going to get VDS set to be 2. So between 2 and 12 is 10 volts. Divide 10 volts into 2 is 5 volts. So 5, 5 volts. Uh, and because this is 2 volts, so 2 plus 5 volts is going to be the middle saturation region is at VDSQ equals to 7 volts. Because 2 plus 5 is 7. And if I know that VDSQ is going to be um, 7, I can find the drain resistance. Okay, this drain resistance to be VDD minus VDSQ divided by IDQ, which was this one here, Ohm's law across RD. VDD minus VD, uh, which is equals to ID RD. So because VD here is actually VDSQ because S is zero. So doing this, we get the value of RD to be 2.5 kilo ohm. Then, then we can determine the required uh, Q point, okay? Uh, required Q point, uh, gate, uh, gate source voltage from the current equation because v IDQ is given to me ohms. We know KN, we know VTN, now we want to find VJSQ, okay? So from here, um, from this expression here, I can find VJSQ, okay, which is equal to 2.41 volts. Now, also, when I know that VJSQ is equal to 2.1 volts, I can go back here. Um, I should have copied this. Okay. So, I can find VG here. If VJSQ is supposed to, supposed to be 2.41 volts, that means the value of VG, okay, f across R1 parallel with R2, the value of VG across R1 in parallel with R2, um, is going to be uh, 2.41 volts. So using this concept, um, and then uh, knowing that R2 uh, and R1 is parallel, okay, I can rearrange this expression okay, to find uh, between okay, uh, R1 and R2 to be equals to um, R1 at 498 kilo ohms and R2 at 125 kilo ohms. All right, and then uh, I can find GM and R out because I know IDQ is a specified value, uh, the specification which is two milliamp, and R out is going to be th three point three three kilo ohm. So anyway, now that we have this value, we can find the voltage gain again. The same process where you have V out expression found from the Ohm's law at R out parallel with RD, V equals to IR, and um, VJS is actually equals to V in. Find the expression, replace it in here, and we get an expression of voltage gain at negative 6.58. Okay, now, what happens if we have a common source amplifier, okay, but this time with a source resistor? Now, if you look at this example here, this is just an example. Okay, we have R1 and R2, which is voltage divided by C. We have RD, which is 7 kilo ohms. But now we have a source signal resistance. And if you look at this example as well, okay, this example circuit, you have a positive 5 for VDD and a negative 5, so, which is the negative supply voltage, uh, negative 5 for this circuit. So this is a dual supply connector of 5 volts and negative 5 volts. Okay. Why do we have a source resistor now? If you remember, it's the same uh, concept as BJT. You have a source resistor to stabilize the Q point against variation in transistor parameters. Now, this transistor has transistor parameters as we usually share, and it changes with temperature and things like that. So if you have 
a source resistor it sort of stabilizes okay the behavior of this amplifier so if for example the value of conduction parameter of the transistor varies from one transistor to another okay let's say you you design it but then you because in reality there's going to be some variation from the same uh, fabrication uh, lot even so uh, you're going to have some changes but if you have RS it's not going to change very much the Q point will not very vary as much if a source resistor is included in the circuit okay however even though it stabilizes the circuit it reduces the signal gain so let's have an example this example covers um, instead of an NMOS let's look at PMOS you know so that you don't get afraid of PMOS and it's, with PMOS it's just the same except that the source is connected higher so instead of VGS you have VSG instead of VDS you have VSD uh, the transistor parameters is KP equals to 0 0.8 milliamp per volt squared you have a VTP equals to negative 0 0.5 volts and here we are assuming that the channel length modulation parameter is 0 which means we can assume that the uh, output resistance of the transistor in the small signal parameter is can be assumed to be infinite the Q point is uh, specified at 0 0.297 milliamps so if I draw the uh, AC equivalent circuit because I already know ID is given in the question see IDQ is given if IDQ is given I can straight away find the small signal transconductance which is uh, 2 times square root KP times IDQ so 2 um, square root of 0 0.8 and times 0 0.297 milli and milli so I'm gonna get 0 0.97 milliamp per volt for GM now if I draw this AC equivalent circuit V in remains uh, VDD positive 3 volts becomes ground VDD negative 3 volts also becomes ground um, so R1 and R2 is going to be in parallel just like this CC is going to be short circuit okay um, so between the source and the drain um, okay and source and the gate sorry between the source and the gate is going to be uh, like an uh, because this is a low frequency circuit just like as in the uh, NMOS equivalent circuit this is going to be an open circuit but, but this is the uh, terminals that specifies uh, V if it had been an NMOS it would have been VGS but because this is a PMOS it's VSG okay VSG so V is uh, the, the positive terminal is is at s here the terminal s right now source resistance 3 kilo ohm is connected from the source to ground okay is connected from source to ground but the output here is taken from the drain terminal okay so it's taken from drain terminal and rd is connected from drain terminal to the ground so rd is connected from drain terminal to the ground okay so this does this does not just take note that this does not become source it's still drain okay and this is all correct if you put source here it's going to be uh, incorrect because the uh, notes will not uh, tally here why is source still here even though source is um, at the top here because um, uh, when you ground this it will still go to the signal ground here will be connected this way and the output terminal is taken from drain it's still a common source uh, circuit uh, here um, you have a KVL output loop okay so if I do why am I doing this because I'm trying to find the voltage gain it's the same process KVL at the output loop to get an expression of V out okay so V out is between drain and ground which is going to be um, GM VSG okay this time this is GM VSG this is the current that goes through here Okay. and because the current now enters V out through the positive terminal there's no negative here so V out is equals to GM VSG times RD okay and at the KVL of the input loop okay I get V in uh, is equals to uh, minus VSG okay why is it minus because I'm doing um, uh, KVL here it will be minus V in minus VSG plus uh, uh, negative of uh, GM uh, VSG times RS so bringing these um, equations uh, left and right okay uh, you get an expression of uh, V in 
and VSG and you can rearrange to find this uh, value of VSG in terms of VA so that you can replace the VSG in the KVL output loop with this expression here. So replacing VSG, okay, once VSG goes in here and you pull V in all to the left side of the equation, so you get V out over V in, you have this expression of minus GMRD plus uh, divided by 1 plus GMRS. So you have here, in this case, a voltage gain of negative 2.48. Alright, now what happens, I think this is going to be our final uh, example, what happens if the common source amplifier with the source resistor has a bypass capacitor? Okay, when it has a bypass capacitor, a source bypass capacitor added to the common source circuit with a source resistor will minimize the loss in the small signal voltage gain while maintaining the Q point stability, meaning it does not interfere with the biasing of the whole circuit, but it will uh, be able to increase the voltage gain. So if the signal frequency is sufficiently large so that the bypass capacitor acts essentially as an AC short circuit, okay. so the source here for this NMOS uh, common source circuit, the source here will be held at signal ground because in AC, this will be a short circuit uh, and it will bypass the um, source resistance here. So the path will just be uh, if we draw the AC equivalent circuit, uh, RS uh, can be removed. So, in fact, if you want uh, Q point stability even more, you can replace the source resistor with a constant current source. Okay? The bypass capacitor will simply short it out in AC analysis, whatever you put out here. Alright, now... <laughs> Uh, the, the example that I said that will be the final example. So we have, let's determine the small signal voltage gain of a circuit biased with a constant current source and incorporating a source bypass capacitor. So this is RD, RG, RS, but RS here we said that, well, it could be a current source, okay, and you can implement a current source with more transistors, okay, but uh, to make life simple, we'll just uh, replace it with a um, constant current source symbol here, okay. Uh, but we have a bypass capacitor. So when you're doing AC analysis, whatever happens here is just going to be shorted. Okay, because this is all going to be short circuit. Okay, now before um, I continue into uh, the analysis, I know that um, uh, I'll first need to verify that the circuit is in saturation. Okay, I need to check that assumption. Um, do I have any statement here indicating what the Q point is? Okay, if I look at this statement, it doesn't. But if I look at the circuit, I know that IDQ is going to be five zero point five milliamps. How? Okay, it gives us IS, but it doesn't give us ID. Now we know that IG is equal to zero, so all of ID is going to be IS. Okay, so. ID is going to be equal to IS, which means IDQ is going to be 0 0.5 milliamps here. Yeah. But then just now I said that uh, capacitor is going to short this out, right? Well, it shorts it, shorts it out in the AC analysis. Okay, But for the DC analysis, for us to get IDQ, uh, we can use this concept to ID the drain current is equal to the source current, which is fixed by this constant current source. Uh, valued at zero, with a value of 0 0.5 milliamps. Okay, so now let's start with the DC analysis. Since the DC gate current is zero, okay, this DC gate current is zero, which means that the voltage drop across RG is going to be zero. Why? Because it's Ohm's law, V equals to IR. Um, so if I is zero, uh, V is going to be zero times RG, so it's going to be zero. And this end of the terminal here is also at the ground, so which means VG is going to be zero. So, if I do, if I want to find VGS, okay, VGS is VG minus VS is equals to VGS. I'm going to have this expression. Uh, VGS is going to be negative VS, okay. And a, assuming that it is in saturation, I can use this expression. IDQ is equals to um, 0 0.5 milliamp. Okay, IDQ is going to be equals to IQ 0 0.5 milliamps times KN. Uh, times the square of VGSQ minus VTN. So VGSQ is the value that we want to find. Um, and we it yields a VGSQ to be equals to negative VS, which is 1.51 volts. Okay. So if this is 1.51 volts, okay, I can find VD okay, from 
Again, Ohm's law, but this time across RD. Okay, ID RD is going to be 0 0.5 times 7 kilo ohms. So if I know 5 volts VDD, VDD minus VD is going to be give me uh, ID RD. So VD, VD here okay, uh, will give me a value. And because I know VS, um, which is uh, negative 1.51, so VD minus VS uh, will give me VDSQ. And VD is um, VDD minus IDQRD. So I get this expression of VDSQ equals to 3.01 volts. Again, um, please be careful with the voltage at a point and voltage across a point. Okay? VD is not IDRD. VD is, uh, it, it corresponds to the value of VDD minus VD equals to IDRD. And VS, again, um, is not uh, just the value VS, but uh, um, keep in mind that um, Vs, which is the value at this point here, okay. If you want to find the voltage drop across this current source, it will have to be Vs minus negative five, for example. So anyway, uh, finding Vds Q is going to be three point zero one, okay, and this is um, going to be smaller, uh, going to be bigger than Vds set, which is one point five one minus zero point eight. So the transistor is biased in the saturation region. Assumption is verified. The next is do the um, AC equivalent circuit. So if you look at here, even though the circuit may frighten you a little bit, because when you look at this, you might panic and say, oh my god, look at this, the current source here. Uh, I've never seen it in the form of current source. Just think, it, it's, it won't go far from what you already know. You know that ID is equal to IS because IG is equal to zero. So ID is going to be the same. This current source here is actually a big help for you because it's actually telling you what the IDU, IDQ is um, um, directly. And even though this circuit may look slightly different, when you do the AC equivalent circuit, um, negative 5 volts becomes ground, positive 5 volts becomes ground, 0 0.5 milliamp uh, is shorted by CS. So what you're left with is RG, which is the uh, resistance from gate to ground, gate to ground vn is also gate to ground and then you have rd from drain to signal ground drain to signal ground okay and source which is uh, which has nothing actually connected it is connected directly to the signal ground and because it's an nmos we have here vgs and the dependent current source of gm vgs for me to find the voltage gain i just do the um output voltage uh, um Ohm's law across RD 7 kilo ohms, which is equals to uh, the current that goes through RD, which is minus GM VGS times RD. Okay, so I have this expression V out equals to minus GM VGS times RD. And again, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want to find AV. For me to find AV, I need to have an expression of V out over V in. Uh, for me to find an expression of V out over V in, I need to have in the same equation V out and V in. But here at the KVL output loop, I have V out, out and VGS. And the good thing is that I can find VGS from the input loop. So if I do uh, KVL at the input loop, VGS is V in. Okay, it's just it's given directly here actually. So VGS is V in. So replace VGS equals to V in here. Then I will have V out equals to negative GM V in RD. Put the V in um, at the other side of the equation. So I get V out over V in equals to negative GM RD, which is equals to negative 9.9. .9. See, the analysis just stick to KVL. Um, just stick to the process. Uh, don't panic. Uh, things that are in series, things that are in parallel, um, you know that IG is equal to zero, what can be um, uh, short circuit, what can be bypassed, okay? Consider all that and you will find that uh, the analysis is not that bad uh, and it will help you to think clearer with what you're doing rather than just memorizing the formula. All right? And just to... Um uh, before I uh, wrap up, just to uh, uh, illustrate when I say that you can handle any kind of analysis actually by just holding on to the basic concepts. Let's just have a look at this uh, exercise problem. I'm not going to solve it, but just just so um, we go through what goes on in our minds when we lo have a look at this kind of uh, situations. We have a common source amplifier. Okay, the transistor parameter is given. Uh, KP prime, W L, so from here I can find KN, 
okay p sorry uh, and then we have here uh, threshold voltage of the PMOS which is negative 0 0.4 volts and the channel length modulation parameter okay which means that we're going to have a value for R out and I, first I need to determine IDQ and VDSQ and then I need to find the small signal voltage gain now for me to find IDQ and VDSQ um, I have here uh, a situation where I will have this uh, coupling capacitor it will be an open circuit this will also CSE will also be an open circuit I know that um, IG is going to be zero and because um, RG is connected to ground and if the current through RG is also zero so Ohm's law uh, will also um, make VG to be equal to zero okay now if I have VG equals to zero but I do not know ID okay I can have an expression uh, using the fact that I assume that it is in saturation, I can have an expression of ID equals to KN VSG minus v, uh, VSG plus VTP squared. Okay, from that expression, I can have an expression of VS and ID. And then where else do I go? I don't know ID here as well. I only know RD. I don't know what VD is. But what I can do is that I can do the voltage drop, the KVL across the output loop here. So what I have is positive 3 minus negative 3 okay which will be the total voltage drop across here okay is going to be um, IDQ okay which is IDQ times RS which, because all of IS is going to be ID okay so the voltage drop here will be IDQ times RS uh, from Ohm's law and I for, for all this I can just label this as VS again so um, VDD um, uh, VDD minus uh, negative VDD will give me uh, the voltage drop across RS plus uh, the voltage source from the source terminal to uh, VDD negative. So from that, I can have an expression of VS. I can solve for VS. If I know VS, I can find IDQ and then everything else just follows. Okay, but the thing is that if you approach um, these topics uh, wanting to memorize formulas um, it's not possible you, what you have to do is that when you look at the circuit you must be able to develop that intuition within you look at the circuit using uh, KVL uh, using Ohm's law using the knowledge of the behavior of the MOSFET device okay you can uh, find solutions to finding the Q points as well as the small signal voltage gain. Okay, now go back uh, and discuss with your course lecturers. Um, do the tutorials. And this is the end of video 3 and the video pack 4. We have completed all the lecture series uh, that replace face-to-face uh, -face, uh, under this COVID um, uh, movement control order um, for video pack 4. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.